Now, from the station on your side, this is Wavy News 10. We begin tonight at 6 with breaking news. An arrest made and a lot of questions still unanswered about the case of a missing woman turned murder investigation. Police have their suspect locked up in the death of Shanita Yor Lewis. But they don't have a lot of pieces to the puzzle yet. The main one where the victim's body may be. Good evening. We're on top of two big stories tonight. We are tracking the intense heat across Hampton Roads. But first, that breaking news. A man arrested for the murder of his wife in Newport News. Ten on your side was first at midday to report that police now believe the disappearance of Shanita Yor Lewis is now a case of murder. And they say her husband, Adrian Lewis, is responsible for her killing. Lewis was arrested at Dulles International Airport just moments before he was reportedly going to leave the country. But after two days of searching their home, the neighborhood, and Lewis's vehicle, what police have not found is the victim's body. You have questions, and so do we. Ten on your side's Andy Fox joins us with more on what police know so far. Andy? Yeah, and of course, it's just started to rain, but we don't have the benefit of search warrants. We were the first, though, to get our hands on the criminal complaint that lays out what investigators think happened. According to the criminal complaint, Shanita and Adrian were having marital problems. She was seeking a divorce. He talked of suicide, which led her to take the guns out of the house that they shared with their two children. The big development was the dumpster up the street from the couple's home. After she went missing, Shanita's sister was out looking for her, find out what happened to her, drove by and saw Adrian throwing something into the dumpster. Newport News Police Chief Steve Drew. There was a couple items. Uh, her purse was recovered, a pair of shoes that was identified, uh, sandals I believe that, that were indicated by family members that was hers. Uh, there was uh, uh, some type of cloth or blanket if you will and, and then there was a shovel that was also recovered. Dirt and shovel. The chief thinks that happening at 345 puts a bookend on the time when Shanita was dead. The chief is concerned a person at the Relax Inn who detailed Adrian's car did not come forward until after police found Adrian's car in this parking lot. That's a concern for me. Um, any individual doing any type of cleaning in that vehicle, um, if you saw what we saw there, I would hope that it would make, draw some concerns. Investigators found a lot of blood. There was uh, blood that was recovered inside the vehicle. There was a spent shell casing that was recovered uh, on, on the outside uh, of the vehicle. Chief Drew got emotional when describing the conversation he had with the couple's two children. Just expressed to them that we care about them, that they matter, that we love them, and that we're going to do everything we can to, to, find, to find their mother. Late this afternoon, we got word that agents at Dulles International found in his travel bag her passport and credit cards. He's supposed to be back here in Newport News to appear in court. In Newport News, Andy Fox, 10 on your side. Andy, thank you. We will continue to follow the case of Shanita Yor Lewis and bring you every development on air and online as they come into the newsroom. The timeline of the events as we know them now are also posted on wavy.com. And new tonight from Virginia Beach, police are looking for a missing woman. Officers say 74-year-old Priscilla Reyes has dementia. She was last seen on Jack Frost Road at around 8.30 this morning. Detectives say she has wandered off in the past, and they're concerned because it's hot. Call police if you've seen her. Our other big story, of course, continues to be the sweltering and dangerous heat and humidity. And there is really no break in sight for us, or most of the nation for that matter. We are still watching for the chance of a pop-up storm, but for the most part, that temperature will continue to climb for the next couple of days. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Edmondson has the update for us tonight, Jeff. Yeah, a couple of showers are popping up across the peninsula. We saw from Andy's report, he mentioned that there's some rain coming down. We have some rain across Newport News. We also have a little bit of rain in Hampton, some rain into Surrey County right now, too. A little bit more into your area. As we look at Super Doppler 10 Live, it looks like it's pretty intense with the rainfall. There's some downpours here or there, very scattered in nature, but mostly into areas around Surrey County is where we have the rainfall right now. But that does extend just north of Smithfield. You're seeing a little bit of rain into your area over the James River and also across the peninsula right now too. South of Aberdeen Gardens, you just had a shower move through your area near Grand View, view into Hampton. You've just seen some rainfall. Rainfall south of Langley. 
maybe sliding into your area towards CNU, the campus. We just had a shower that moved overhead. Looking at CNU right now, this is a fine arts center. Things are looking and appearing dry, so what I believe you probably saw are just some droplets that came from the sky. Not much rainfall. So we have a sunny view as we look across the peninsula right now, at least from that camera. Our temperatures are in the 80s in Norfolk, 90 degrees still in Chesapeake. It feels like it's in the upper 90s, near 100 degrees in some spots into tomorrow. More heat and humidity, a lot of sunshine with a couple of showers and storms possible in the afternoon. Better chances for strong storms coming up Thursday and this weekend. That looks hot too. I'll show you that in just a bit. And as the days get hotter, the chances of getting sick from the heat will also be on the increase. First responders across the area are bracing for what could be a run of heat related illnesses. 10 on your side's Chris Horn has more on the signs your body may have had too much of the heat and humidity. The first phase of being in trouble in the heat is called heat exhaustion. That has its own characteristics and symptoms. But then there's a more serious level, heat stroke. If you don't want to see one of these outside your home, know the signs beforehand that extreme heat is getting the best of you. First, there's heat exhaustion. Uh, excessive uh, sweating, uh, thirst. Um, when going back to talking about hydration, if you're thirsty, it's already a little bit too late. That's your body's indication that you need fluids, so take fluids early and often. With heat exhaustion, you'll have increased body temperature and fatigue. Those messages being sent from your body that says, hey, I'm getting a little bit more fatigued, I'm breathing a little bit more heavily, um, I find that the task that I was just doing is a whole lot harder than it was 10 minutes ago. And then if you stop sweating, it could well be heat stroke. Lack of sweating, we have some confusion or disorientation, um, and sometimes uh, other uh, worse medical maladies can happen like stroke, heart attack. So plan ahead, wear light, loose-fitting clothing, and drink plenty of fluids without alcohol and caffeine, and you should be able to keep your cool. So we hope these tips have helped you prepare for the next heat wave. A climate scientist told the Washington Post this week that this might be the coolest summer we experience for many years. It's only going to get worse. In Newport News, Chris Horn, 10 in your side. And as we've said, we are not alone with this oppressive heat. Tens of millions of Americans are dealing with what seems to be a nationwide heat wave. Parts of the deep south are soaring well past 100 degrees today. NBC Nightly News will have the latest on the heat across the nation and across the pond in Europe at 630. And remember, the Super Doppler 10 weather team has you covered with everything you need to know about the heat. And the Wavy Weather app has the latest temperature in your community right on your phone. Another shooting on the interstate is developing tonight. State police are looking for a suspect in a shooting on I-264 in Norfolk. Happened around 245 this morning in the westbound lanes of 264 near Brambleton Avenue. Police have not released if anyone was hurt or any information on a suspect vehicle yet. Norfolk police are looking into a late night shooting that happened on the same street as a shooting on Sunday. We're told a woman was shot just after 11 last night on Greenleaf Drive off Campostella Road. She was taken to the hospital where she is expected to be OK. This happened on the same street as the shooting of a man Sunday morning around 1 a.m. That victim was taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. No suspect information has been released in either case yet. Tonight, a local minister is looking for answers after his church is broken into twice. Ahead on Wavy News 10 at 6, what the burglar got and what the pastor is saying about what happened. First, a word of warning about the heat and people diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's. What caregivers need to know about these special cases after the break. And Jeff has more on how high those temperatures will go and whether there's any relief on the way. And in sports, Nathan Epstein talks live with Taylor Heineke ahead of a big event tonight in Norfolk. It's all as we continue on this Tuesday night. From the station on your side, you're watching Weepy News 10 at 6. 10 on your side is reminding families dealing with dementia of the added dangers their loved ones face with this week's extreme heat. And some of the signs of heat exhaustion and dehydration can be harder to spot. And if they wander, they could quickly be in physical danger. Just yesterday, police were looking for 85-year-old Philip Rollins, who had wandered away. Fortunately, he was found safe. 
The Alzheimer's Association of Southeastern Virginia is urging families facing Alzheimer's and dementia to have a plan for the heat. And if they're unable to stay home alone, finding alternative places for them to be, especially making sure that it's a cooler place and that air conditioning is available. Now, signs of dehydration, such as increased fatigue, dry mouth and headache may be difficult in a person living with dementia. Medications or combinations of them can affect the body's ability to regulate temperatures and older adults in general don't adjust as easily to sudden temperature changes. Next at six, hit twice. A local church deals with a pair of break-ins. What the pastor is telling the community about the crime when we come back. And the heat gets ready to go up yet another notch. Jeff's forecast and what you need to know to stay cool on the other side of the break. From the station on your side, you're watching Weepy News 10 at 6. And we're back now with yet another local place of worship targeted by criminals. This time, someone struck not once, but twice. Burglars hit the Triumph Christian Center on Huntington Avenue near Newport News Shipyard. Both break-ins happened within a few days. 10 on your side's Amy Avery has more on what the suspect got and why this case may be a little tougher to crack. Amy? Well, Lena and Tom, Newport News Police is investigating both of these break-ins along with a third instance of vandalism at Triumph Christian Church. But church leaders tell me instead of breaking in through the windows, they wish the suspects would have just come through the front door. When we got here, this door was cracked. It was just like this. Triumph Christian Center pastor Dr. Reginald Dawkins came to the church Saturday night and found the front door left open. He says he came in and realized the burglars took the air conditioner out of his office window to get inside. They came through in my administrator's office and broke the window. Pastor Dawkins says during the most recent break-in, the thieves took a computer and several church credit cards. He says the church has a video surveillance system, but the cameras weren't recording. He says the cards were later used to purchase food, something he would have given them had they knocked on the door. And I can't tell you how many people have knocked on that door during the week and have asked for bus money, food, and clothes, and we have given it to them. Pastor Dawkins says he's saddened about the break-ins, but not surprised. So I'm not exempt. We don't get an exempt card to say they're going to skip Triumph. Pastor Dawkins says now he's meeting with community members and police to help come up with a solution to address the rise in crime in the area. And some people don't even have hope. Without hope, people do stuff like this. Pastor Dawkins says, ironically, the messages he's been preaching from the pulpit this month are about forgiveness. He believes these break-ins are the Lord's way of bringing it home. It's not just have church on Sunday, but on the outside of these walls that we try to reach. Now the church is having a community meeting tonight at 630 to come up with solutions as to better address the rise in crime in the area. They say Newport News Police will also be there as well. But if you do know anything that could help police solve those break-ins, call 1-888-LOCK-YOU-UP. Amy Avery, 10 on your side. Now your Super Doppler 10 forecast with Chief Meteorologist Jeff Edmondson. We have temperatures that were in the 90s today. 92 degrees was the high temperature, just two degrees above the average high. But we've had plenty of days in the 90s, upper 80s, not terribly hot for our month of July. Uh, but when we look at the uh, look at the big picture, we have had some heat. It seems like every Tuesday has been kind of the hottest day of the week. We'll see if that can continue next week. Rainfall amounts were about average where we need to be this month. We've had an occasional round of showers and storms into the area. Some more rain on the way for later on this week. There's some rain out there right now. Now too. We'll look at that here in just a little bit. But what about 100 degree temperatures? When do we usually see that or when does it happen? The earliest we've ever seen 100 degree plus temperatures was in 1991 on May 31st. The average date is on July 11th. So we're kind of in that window now to maybe see it. It's not a guarantee to get it every year. And the latest we've ever seen 100 degree heat was on uh, an August day in 1983. Our temperatures are sitting in the upper 80s to mid 80s right now in Virginia Beach, 92 in Suffolk. It's not scorching hot outside. It feels like it is with that humidity out there. Heat and disease are in the mid to upper 90s right now. 
but we'll have more heat on the way into tomorrow and also on Thursday too. So let's preview tomorrow. As we start the day, we're in the upper 70s, very humid in the morning. During the afternoon, this is at 1 p.m. We're in the mid 90s, maybe upper 90s in some spots. The wind will be out of the southwest tomorrow, about 5 to 10 miles an hour. So that perfect wind direction to get that really high temperature and heat across our area. Doesn't matter what time of year it is. Whenever we have a wind out of the southwest, you can count on that day likely being warmer as long as it's rain free or well, any type of precip free uh, throughout the region. Then Thursday, we'll have temperatures that'll be in the 90s. This model's not going as hot on Thursday. It's really picking up on the pop-up uh, clouds and showers that we could have, but we could see upper 90s coming up on Thursday. Thursday also looks to be the windiest day for this week with wind speeds 10 to 20 miles an hour. So we'll have a bit of a breeze with that fan turned on, a hot fan coming up on Thursday. For tonight, we have some showers and thunderstorms are really blossoming across the peninsula and also areas near Rushmere, Surrey County right now. You're getting some solid rainfall in your area. Also some rain appearing over the monitor Merrimack that might drift right over the base into areas into Norfolk. So maybe a touch of rain for the south side. Not seeing anything severe out of this, just some downpours uh, moving through the area. So you're getting some fresh rainfall. What about in Williamsburg? Are you going to see this move in? Possibly, if this can make more of a northerly push, you could get some rain around James City County and Williamsburg tonight. But I would really say uh, for Oyster Point areas around Newport News into Hampton, Pocosin, you have the better chance to see some rainfall as we go into the evening. Here's the last two hours on Tower Cam. Cumulus clouds passing by off in the distance. You can maybe see some of the rain showers that move through. It's hard to see. There's one right there. That's the one that we saw that's closer to areas near the base, Naval Station Norfolk. So we'll see if we can get some rain into your area tonight. Tomorrow temperatures are going to be hot. Highs will be in the mid 90s, upper 90s inland. So a hot and humid day coming up tomorrow. Showers and storms are also possible Thursday afternoon and into the evening hours. A breezy day on Thursday, kind of like if your oven has a convective oven fan in the back of the oven, uh, oven tube. Yeah, it's going to feel like that coming up on Thursday. Friday, 92 degrees. Saturday, 95. Sunday, 96. I'm Nathan Epstein at the Norfolk Marriott, head of tonight's Norfolk Sports Club Jamboree. The keynote speaker, I think you've heard of him. He was last year's starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders, an Old Dominion great, Taylor Heineke, and he joins us next on the Sport Trap. Sports Wrap, sponsored by Marco's Pizza. Marco's Pizza lovers get it. For decades, the Norfolk Sports Club has helped promote and elevate youth and high school athletes in the area, providing recognition and scholarships for hundreds of thousands of youngsters. Tonight is the crown jewel on the club's calendar, the Norfolk Sports Club Jamboree, and the keynote speaker, you know this name, Taylor Heineke. I'm Nathan Epstein coming to you live from the Norfolk Marriott and tonight the Norfolk Sports Club Jamboree and here with us the man of the hour Taylor Heineke played in all 16 games for the commanders last year and of course an Old Dominion legend so Taylor this is a club by the way during this event that has had some unbelievable coaches and athletes speak at this thing you talk about Ralph Sampson you talk about so many greats like David Wright and they've asked you to speak so what does it mean for them to ask you to speak and what do you think it says about your impact in this area yeah it means a lot uh, again like you just said there's so many been been so many you know big time people that come here and spoken and um, you know I got I was fortunate enough to spend four years here at ODU and made some great memories and um, you know made a big enough impact to you know have the chance to do this so um, you know I'm excited to be here I'm excited for this opportunity and again hopefully I just don't go up there and, and, and choke so you know hey listen if there's one thing you cannot associate with Taylor Heineke it's choking especially with two minutes to go in a game uh, but Taylor you know you have come up with so many great moments your story your underdog story is unbelievable you were two weeks away from retiring and then you're playing Tom Brady in the playoffs and you played your way into a contract. So what does that story say about you and what do you hope to convey uh, tonight? I think it kind of just, that moment kind of shined the light on kind of my whole life. Um, I was always told I was too small and I couldn't do this or that. Um, I've kind of always clawed or battled my way to, to starting position or, you know, to ODU to get a scholarship. Um, and that was kind of just like, that moment where everyone kind of see, um, you know, my life kind of in a nutshell. So, um, again, that was a very special moment. Uh, it kind of kept me, it got me, bought me two more years in the league, and uh, hopefully I can, you know, play three, four more. 
And last thing I'll ask you is, what do you want your message to be tonight? I know that you were hosting your first camp in Norfolk just a few days ago, and I saw the reaction from the kids and how much they love seeing you. You got about 1,500 kids. So that's, that's what it's all about. It's about making an impact. What do you hope your message, and what do you want your message to be tonight? Um, it's, again, it's kind of been my, my life story. It's about, all about adversity, um, kind of how you deal with it. And, you know, you can take one of two ways. You can, you can look at it and try and get better from it um, and, and improve on it, or you can go the opposite route. And, um, you know, again, my whole life, you know, whether it's football, losing family members, um, you know, other things like that, um, you just kind of, you know, things happen, and it's all about how you respond to it. So um, that's all I always tell the kids when, when I come do camps. It's all about adversity and how you handle it. So, you know, I think that will be the main main focus tonight. But, you know, again, I'm excited for it. All right. Taylor Heineke joins us live on the Sports Wrap at the Norfolk Sports Club Jamboree. That's live from Norfolk Marriott. Nathan Epstein, it's on your side of the Sports Wrap. Back to you guys. Lots of good lessons there, Nathan. Thank you. Here's what's coming up tonight on News Nation Live in Primetime. Tonight on Banfield, the Manhattan clerk who stabbed his attacker to death but then found himself charged with murder has been granted a reprieve. Why the sudden change of heart from the Manhattan DA? Plus, the secret to a long and happy marriage from a couple going on 80 years together tonight on Banfield. News Nation on the cable and satellite providers on the channels on your screen. Our next newscast next with Amy Avery on Fox 43.